all started um, with uh, a small group of people, one guy in particular who decided that uh, he wanted to meet some friends and go for a regular jog and chose a park to do it in. As it grew, as the, the energy around it grew, he, he wrapped a little bit of governance around it and put some stopwatches and, and a way of actually measuring what you're doing and keeping that for um, long periods of time. But it went live in uh, September uh, of 2015. So in, in a few weeks time, we will, we will celebrate our eighth uh, birthday of, of being on Jersey. We've now got 10, just under 10,000 people registered for Parkrun, which 10% of the population virtually is registered for Parkrun, which is, which is great. It's about not watching the people who are winning or coming in, you know, in the top five. It's about the people who've got their own personal reasons for doing a park run. Hello and welcome to a brand new uh, Sportscast Jersey episode. Today we are joined by Jersey Parkrun co-event director, Michael Chater. How are you doing today, Michael? I'm good, thank you, Dan. Nice to be on your podcast. Good, good. Good to have you. Um, I always start with the same kind of question for every one of my guests. Um, have you always been sporty since a young age? Yes, so so I'm I'm elderly now, um, but uh, in my younger years it was all uh, football predominantly. So I played for uh, Sunderland, Sunderland boys under 14s, under 15s, under 16s, under 18s. Um, had a chance of a professional career, but parents wouldn't let me, and decided uh, academic study was the thing for me, and probably just as well. But I also um, sprinted as well, so 100 and 200 meters to a fairly good standard, uh, sort of town and county standard. Um, really enjoyed that. Um, but football was always the, the key sport. Uh, yeah. Did a few great north runs, uh, because I was up in the, the northeast of England and it was just on your doorstep, so that was okay. Um, but I wasn't really a distance runner. I, I love 100, 200, 400 at a, at a push, but uh, the shorter distances were far better. Yeah, um, I played football to a to a fairly decent standard, a semi-pro in the UK, before my job moved me out to Jersey. Um, just before I came out, I'd had a bad break to my ankle and, and uh, leg in a innocuous football tackle. It wasn't, it wasn't really a, a dirty challenge or anything. It just took me off my balance and, and my ankle just snapped. So that was, that was an interesting thing. Um, and then I moved to Jersey and uh, sort of thought the standard here might be um, uh, a slower pace and nice and easy. But uh, I joined Trinity Football Club and played for them for 10 years. And in that 10 years, we went from the lower end of the old second division in the combination to winning the first division in the Wee Wear Cup at Springfield, which is probably the highlight. Yeah. Mate. Retired from there at 42, stopped playing at 42 and uh, started running more distances. And did a few ultra marathons and things, and uh, got, got a bit of a bug for it, um, yeah. and and then sort of got involved in parkrun. Yeah, definitely, it's great, great little background there. And I want to touch on the football just to start with. Obviously, we're here for parkrun. We're going to discuss that more and more uh, later in the podcast. But I didn't know about the football side of things. But is there any regret there that you didn't push on? and stay with Sunderland or have wherever you had the opportunities? Mm. Not really, because I there were sort of three of us in the school and county setup who were being approached by clubs. And one of them, who was far better than me, in my view, uh, went on to sign for Luton Town. Um, he went training with them in the summer. They'd taken on 36 kids and actually only took two at the end of the summer period in, to sign pro con contracts. So I look at that, he didn't make it. And I look at that and think, 
at the end of the day probably was a wise move. You, you don't know how these things turn out. Um, sometimes you think you are better than you actually are. But I knew I, I it was going to be a tough one. Um, so I just went then to play in sort of amateur, semi-pro stuff in the northeast of England and really enjoyed that. And there were there were some really good players around. So no regrets. Uh, love watching it, love playing it, but no regrets in not pursuing it. Yeah, yeah. Brutal sport, I think. Uh, and I think it's tough at that level in terms of competition. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, moving swiftly into running now. Obviously... You said now uh, you you're a short distance, hundred meter, two hundred meter. When was the first time? Do you remember the first race or first time you went out and did either five k, ten k? When you upped the distances a bit. Yeah, so it was a few organised events in in the northeast of England. Ten um, k, I don't, I can't remember a five k ever. 10k seemed to be the sort of threshold that uh, running clubs organised events for. And I, I can remember doing a few 10k's and then suffering all week because it was just a foreign distance to me. It was it was too far. And then you sort of get the, the bug for it and you want to do it a bit more and the, the, the pain becomes pleasure and uh, it becomes enjoyment and it becomes almost a personal struggle between you, you the clock, and whether you can improve your time. Um, so I, th- I think 10K was the first thing I can remember. And I remember being horribly hard, um, but then becoming enjoyable and then moved on to a, a half marathon distance, which was almost worse in, in um, you know, once you get to 10 miles in a, in a half marathon, it's, I, I think I'm going to die. When is this thing going to end? And, it, and the last bit, I can remember walking, the lots of the last sort of three miles of half marathons at the start. Yeah, yeah, it is hard. And even I, I do halves now, and even my last when I was like that, and even though I've done a few before, and you think you, you, you've packed it, and then it all depends on the day as well. What were your kind of tips for people who've never done those distances before to get through those races? Yeah. Well, I think it's not being embarrassed to walk. I think running, jogging and walking um, and also open your eyes and have a look around you. You see a lot of runners with their heads down on the tarmac or on the trip, you're on the trail and and Jersey is beautiful. So it's a case of just lifting your head a little bit and and enjoying it. So a couple of years ago, I did a half marathon every week for 52 weeks. So I did the whole year of half marathons and I can honestly say the first month and a half were torture and then after that the body was quite used to it some some I would you know be walking and and running and and jogging if I was on trails um and I got to the end of it and there was a transformation in my body completely I felt um I wouldn't use the words like fitter I, I just I just felt better in myself that that regular exercise even if it was a shorter distance, um, was good for me. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm 59 coming up in a week and uh, I uh, feel really good, which I think is important. And I think running whatever distance with even a bit of walking in between that has helped. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Good advice and good points. Um, moving on to Parkland now, we'll come on to Jersey Parkland, but Talk to people who might not be aware or might might know what Parkrun is vaguely, but isn't sure how it started. How, how did it all start? So it all started um, with uh, a small group of people, one guy in particular who decided that uh, he wanted to meet some friends and go for a regular jog and chose a park to do it in. Um, that became quite popular and he then developed that into something which was a regular you know 9am on a Saturday morning a run through a park with friends and then a coffee afterwards so it's it's actual pure origins were very social uh, very interactive less about how fast you can run a, um, a 5k but of course they were runners so it was of interest to them but but less so about um, beating um, 
ask each other, I, I guess, and and it not being a first, second, third position sort of thing. Um, and then it, uh, conceptually, it was a case of, well, I think this could be repeated. And so he, he started that very slowly to um, repeat that process and other people bought into that. Um, and then you started to see park runs um, prevalent in just the UK at this at this particular time. Uh, so I think it's about seven, 16, 17 years ago it all started. Um, and they started to pop up. Um, so he, he as it grew, as the, the energy around it grew, he, he wrapped a little bit of governance around it and put some stopwatches and, and a way of actually measuring what you're doing and keeping that for um, long periods of time. So you could run one every Saturday morning, miss next week, come the week after, miss a couple of weeks, come the week after, didn't matter. Um, but then keep a record of you know whether you were improving or, or what was happening. But importantly, along the way, it was always about having a coffee after with friends and um, and it becoming and staying a, a, a social thing that would that would grow. Yeah. Um, and it just it sort of grew in in that very short period. It, it's grown to seven hundred plus in the UK, and now it's worldwide. Um, but the beauty of it is your your barcode, which is very simple to get and very simple to register with Parkrun for. Your your barcode is then used anywhere in the world. So uh, I've been to Aspen in Colorado and ran the Parkrun, uh, which is the highest Parkrun in the world, just by chance. Um, and my barcode counts and it records my run there. Um, says I've done it in a in another um, geography around the world. And here's the time, and, and and it's just quite a useful little record to keep. Yeah. So I think it had real pure origins of it's not about being a runner, it's about sort of friendship and interaction, but getting out regularly on a on a weekend to do it, and then growing in to be what it is today, which I guess at times becomes a bit unwieldy because it's so big. Yeah. Uh, but it's still it's a registered charity in the UK, and it has sponsors to make sure that it remains free for everyone, which is important, um, for however long Parkrun uh, is in existence. So nobody ever has to pay to do this sort of organised event uh, where you'd be timed if you if that's important to you uh, or you come and just have a social gathering. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that I, I obviously do it quite a lot now. I've caught the bug. Um, and... I think the key thing is that it is social and um it's not it's not a competitive race at all. And it's well you can make it competitive with within yourself, but with others you're always encouraging them and it's not competitive with others. Um what how quickly did it come to Jersey and um who kind of set that all up? So um, 2015, September 2015. So uh, that, that's probably a good way into the parkrun um, lifespan in the UK. And there was a there was a sort of a, a few people milling around. You know, should should we really have parkrun in Jersey? And uh, it was Paul Burrows who um, runs Trail Monkey now, and uh, he he sort of took the idea a step further and discussed it with the Jersey government and said, you know, this would be a really good concept to have. Um, it requires some funding. Um, Parkrun uh, will will uh, put a grant into starting you up, but you do need the support of um, the, the local government. You need the support of the local parks to make sure you've got somewhere safe um, to, to do it. So there's a lot of things to, to iron out before it could uh, go live. Um, but it went live in uh, September uh, of 2015. So... In in a few weeks' time, we will we will celebrate our eighth uh, birthday of, of being on Jersey with with only a couple of occasions when it hasn't taken place, except in COVID, which which of course is different. But we've we've only had a couple of occasions when when it hasn't taken place. So there's that, you know that regularity is there. But yeah, um, he set that up, um, and then uh, myself and Sam Horsfall uh, took on the uh, event director role, which is essentially backing into parkrun and making sure that safety um, standards, consistency, um, and then anything in, uh, around the technology 
to make it all happen is all sort of um, controlled and, uh, and in a uniform way. And then you've got Matt Cuthbert, who's been there since the start, as, as Sam has, uh, involved in, in actually being a volunteer rather than a runner of the, the event. Um, and, uh, and then we've got some regular run directors. So there's a small core team. Um, so you've got Sam, you've got Matt, you've got uh, Caroline, uh, you've got Billy and yourself. So we, we sort of make it happen every week and we take turns to do that. Um, but actually volunteering is, is better than running better than yeah. jogging better than walking it's it and i think you touched on it dan it's about not watching the people who are winning or coming in you know in the top five it's about the people who've got their own personal reasons for doing a park run and it might they might come in after an hour that doesn't matter we will still be there we don't start closing anything down and making you feel embarrassed that you are keeping people waiting that's not what it's about if it takes you an hour and a quarter to walk the course, that's fine. And it, you know, you, you shouldn't feel anything else other than it was a lovely walk and you completed parkrun. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great ethos. Yeah, definitely. And do you remember were you there for the very first one? Do you remember how much the I think I've seen photos the cut the actual courses changed a little bit over time? Yeah. Do you remember how do you look back at that now and compared to how you organize it now? Yeah. So I, I first um, took part in it as a, as a runner, um, probably a couple of months into it being officially set up and, and working. Um, I'd done a few park runs already in the UK. So I was already registered and uh, had done a few and um, completed the Jersey one. And it's a lovely course. It's, it's not really hilly. You've got a few little, little um inclines to to navigate but generally it's a lovely course through uh the woodland and through the you know round round the track um so it's it's lovely and safe and it's a it's a wide course at the start and then it sort of thins up but you get some great views and you can you can you've got some great company as well um so i i remember that bit of it but very much in a almost a competitive way it was what what's my time can, can I beat it next week? Then um, Paul said to me, why don't you just volunteer? And and because um, they, they were short. So every week, it, it does take a, a small group of people to make it happen safely. So I volunteered and actually enjoyed the volunteering side um, as much as the running side. Yeah. Uh, and then that sort of transitioned to, first I was volunteering every couple. And, and now if, if I'm on Jersey, I will always volunteer and, and I never run it because I get more out of seeing people setting it up and seeing people complete it than I do about completing it myself. Yeah, yeah, amazing. And um, over 350 park, Jersey Park runs now, as you say, you rarely miss a week as well, um, yeah. COVID aside. Um, how good has that been? How good have, how Please, you to see how much people are enjoying getting. Um, each week, there's obviously visitors coming from other places, but the last mm-hmm. over summer, especially the newbies starting again, um, starting up and doing it for the first time every week. How how pleased yeah. are you to see the numbers come back and back as well? Yeah, I think that's amazing. So. Pre-COVID, we were running at about an average of 350, which including the volunteers is about 375 a week, uh, which is which is phenomenal every single week. Um, and then COVID had a little bit of a, uh, a an impact when you look back now, because when we started up again, there was a bit of a release and people wanted to be out and doing something. And our numbers went up to about 400 for a few weeks, and then they went. Um, and leveled off at about 250 um, and which was great but you could clearly see that people had changed during COVID and they've probably got other things to do and enjoyed other things and um, so, so it changed the dynamic a little bit that's that's slowly come back to exactly where it was before but as you said it, it's so we, we've now got 10 just under 10,000 people registered for parkrun which 10 percent of the population virtually is registered for parkrun, which is which is great, um, and we've had about five hundred 
new registrations so far this year. So it's a very simple process. It's great to see new people coming. I, I saw somebody a few weeks ago who I used to work with, and I never, ever in a million years thought that person would show up in a park room. Um, and she'd brought a son along, and he was doing it for the first time. And I said to her, you should do it. You should do it with him. And two weeks later, she came up to me and said, here I am, and here's my barcode, and, and I'm ready to go. And then afterwards, although um, she was physically exhausted, um, having not done that sort of distance uh, in a lot of years, um, but really enjoyed it. And I guess that's the key thing, that um, uh, it, it's, it's, not a, it's not a pain thing. People, I think people's perception is, oh, you're going to go and run 5K, so that would be hell. Yeah. But you're not. You're, you're jogging it or you're walking it or you're chatting to somebody or you're with a friend and then you might go for coffee after or you might just stand or sit on the grass afterwards and have a catch-up that you haven't had in a long time. So it's, um, it's a lot of things to a lot of people and it, it is amazing to watch. But you also touched there, Dan, on um, tourists. I mean, Jersey Parkrun is in my view, quite an amazing tourism attraction. The number of people who come just to do parkrun, they don't come on holiday, they come to do parkrun and they bring their uh, families and sometimes their families will volunteer and they, they will run it. And um, It's got a bit of an unknown or unmeasured quantity uh, to Jersey Tourism, which is significant. Each week we will post maybe a picture of... Uh, the tourist group having their run, having their brief before the run, and it's enormous. It's yeah. it's it's enormous. So we we must have had sixty or so there on uh, on Saturday morning, and and they've got associated family and it, it's it's incredible. So it's it's definitely an attraction. Yeah, I agree. And each week, obviously, I'm doing my warm up and I look over at it. How many new newbies or first timers there are? And it, it's it's so good to see um yeah it's it's just brilliant and i want to touch on first timers because i know from my experiences i was a bit nervous at the start the first time i was doing it um on that start line i was never sure about it but now i love it and um it was a way in obviously i did running over lockdown but it was a way into running for me i think um how, how much would you say it's a good starting point for anyone that wants to start running? Yeah, it, it absolutely is. It's because it's got a bit of, um, it, it's got no stigma attached to it. I think if, if I, if I turned up at a running event, I guess I would expect to run and I'd feel embarrassed if I was last or, you know, it, or if I showed myself up in, in some way. So I think running events, um, have got their place, um, but they're sometimes a bit scary for, for some people. I think parkrun strips that down. It, take, it takes away any feeling of I have to perform in a certain way because we have got four-year-olds registered and we've got 90-year-olds registered. And if you looked at the end of every parkrun at the last, say, 20 people coming in, you will find a lot of very young children who are out walking, stroke jogging with their parents doing it uh, or being pushed around in a pushchair, which is hard work, but they, you know, they're there as a family. And you'll find a lot of older people who might not feel like they can fit into a running event, but they can come to park run dressed however they want to dress and they can walk it and chat. And for some people, that, that might be the only exercise they get through the week. It might be the only, social, the only social contact they get through the week. So it's got multiple sort of bits to it that are very important for people. But importantly, from a well-being point of view, from a health point of view, um, you, you're not really competing a run in inverted commas. You are you're complete, competing something at your own pace where you feel comfortable and you feel safe. And... Um, you, you can do that by yourself. There's lots of places in Jersey to do that. But this is also a very good um, setting to do it regularly each week and, and get those social interactions. So it, so it is a run. Don't get me wrong, Dan. It, it, people want to run it and people want to improve on their times. 
But with that range of age demographic, it, it's something else as well. It's 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 a very different type of event. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And I think when you say it is a run, it is, but people won't judge you on how fast you want to go or how fast you can go as well. Yeah. Um, I think that's key to say because obviously you've got your front guys. Um, you're, even I'm like, wow, <laughs> how are you doing it that fast? Uh, you've got guys who might be at the back, but they're still completing it the best they can and they're still up there doing it. Yeah. You can see the smile on their faces at the end. And I want to touch on um, volunteers. Obviously, you've touched on it. But there's obviously more than the group that you've said volunteering each week. It's a big yes. and how how important are they to park? Uh, well, absolutely yeah. essential to make it happen because the, the event, what you can't do is put on an event that is not safe, not really managed in the right way. And I, and I mean that because if somebody were out completing it, and tripped on a stone or you know something happened to them that was a kilometer away from where we are the, as the sort of core of organizers at the center um you, you just need to know what's going on and you need to make sure that people are both safe and uh, you are controlling it in the right way and you need volunteers to do that so as well as the the, the basics of we need timekeeping we need people to be able to record the basics for the person for their individual run, jog or walk. Um, we also need people out on the course who are maintaining that safety level, who are keeping an eye on what's going on. Because we, we do share the, the path. There's lots of other people out with their children or walking or cycling or doing their own thing. And uh, we share that. And we've got to make sure that that is a, when you've got 350 people doing it at the same time, that that is done in the, the right way so that everybody enjoys it, whether you're participating in parkrun or, or not. Uh, and of course, we, we do have um, visually impaired runners. We, we do have people who have challenging physical conditions that, um, that you know, we need to be very aware of. And when, you, when you've got partially sighted runners, they, they've got guides with them, but we've also got to make sure that we're doing our bit to make sure that's an absolutely safe course for them and that they're finished and they've really enjoyed it. So... Um, the volunteer role is uh, is crucial, really. And, you know, we, we have been so blessed with um, the, the number of people who come forward who either run, jog or walk regularly and then volunteer or who are visiting and volunteer. Or in some cases, we've got, we've got a lot of volunteers who don't have a connection with running. They don't have a connection with anybody who's doing it. They do it because they want to volunteer. And it's something that they feel very, very... Uh, comfortable and enjoy doing and uh, we've got a lot of regular volunteers who do that and they are amazing for us yeah absolutely absolutely and their fight and their support uh, is just great as well i think that that needs to say on the run if you have volunteers all the way around which parkland does on most corners of the court it, it's yeah. really um what how would you? How much would you encourage people to come up and have a go and enjoy a park, Jersey Park run? Well, I think the um, I think it, park run complements a lot of things out there. So Jersey Sport, uh, you know, run more, move more. Sorry, they they do a, they do a lot of great things out there in terms of walking, and in terms of couch to five k, which the which park run is used to sort of graduate those those people. So. It, it has its place in um, the evolution of, of movement, really. So whether you're walking it, whether you're jogging it, whether you're running it, and you want to go on. We've seen so many people who come up there and then go on to longer and more challenging runs. Um, so, so it has its place. Um, and I think because it's a very safe place, it's very well organised. There's some great people who both participate and volunteer at it. Um, it's just the comfortable environment that's created for people to come and enjoy the activity. Um, sometimes the Saturday morning at nine o'clock is a challenge to some people because they work or they've got other commitments. Um, and unfortunately, Parkrun is 
nine o'clock Saturday morning. And that, that that doesn't deviate. But but when you can fit into that, it's just the perfect way to um, get physical exercise, get mental exercise in terms of the stimulation of what it what it does for you. Um, and that whole community thing, it's 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 definitely a community inclusive event. But at the end of the day, what better way to start your weekend if you've if you've been at work sort of a traditional working hours and then you get to a weekend and you know it's been a long week, it's been a stressful week, it's been whatever. A Saturday morning doing something like that to, you know, release those endorphins and get you feeling happy is a great way to start the weekend. And the rest of your weekend, you know, after that is uh, is is built on that. So it's it's great. Um, and I think the, the important thing is we are celebrating our eighth birthday in September. We are here for the long term. So, you know, it's something that you can, um, people do like routine. They do like regularity. And that's something which, you know, we will be there at that time each week. Um, uh, unless something major happens to, to close the event down. Like the, we had the football, the new football uh, floodlights went up um, a few months ago. And after the first week, they fell down right on the parkrun area. Thankfully, when nobody was there, but uh, that was that was the only week this year that uh, this year that we had to not carry out the event. But that was from a safety point of view. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. it it is just that sort of routine regularity inclusion, um, and of course, it's a very simple process to register and do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, final question today, Michael. Nice and simple one. Sum up park on in just three words. Um, well, I'd, I'd probably say what I just ended up on there, and that is it, it's very simple to register for parkrun. And once you've registered once, you're registered permanently, and you can you can do it anywhere you want to, wherever there's a parkrun. So, so it's very simple. Uh, it's very inclusive. You don't, you don't have to be at any standard whatsoever. It is just an inclusive event that is designed to um, not make you feel like you shouldn't be there as a as a runner, a jogger, or a walker. Uh, you know, and and I think um, because of that, it's it's very community focused. So, I've, I, in fact, I, I do see us down as something that you, we don't try and grow numbers. We're not we're not trying to get more people to come. We're just there as a community event that has its place in the health. And the well-being of the of the island, and um, and for people who want to run, jog, or walk, uh, you've got something that you can, um, you know, be part of. So I think community is probably the strongest theme to it. Yeah, absolutely. I I agree, and um, it's it's brilliant. I couldn't um, advise or encourage people more to go up and have a go and get involved. Um, it, it, yeah, it's a great event and. Yeah. Thank you for coming on today, Michael. Um, it's been good chatting. Thank you for the work you do at Parkrun as well, as someone who does it. And I think it's great, as I said. And the health benefits, both mentally and physically, to it is second to none. So, yeah, thank you and keep on doing what you're doing. No, thank you, Dan. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thank you for everyone who's listened or watched this podcast. Um, another sportscast jersey episode is coming soon. Mm-hmm.